For those of us old enough to remember, who can forget the classic film, Dr. Zhivago? Strelnikov speeds past in his war train on the Trans-Siberian Express. Strelnikov in the movie is meant to be Trotsky in real life. The fight for the Trans-Siberian Express during the Russian Revolution became the fight for Russia and it took years. The Trans-Siberian Express is the longest railroad in the world and I've been to both ends, both in Moscow and in Vladivostok. Control of Russia depended almost entirely upon control of the Trans-Siberian Express. It was a hard-fought war, very bitter. The Czech Foreign Legion actually controlled the Far East of Russia because of their control of the Trans-Siberian Express, especially in the East. Eventually, the Communists took full control of the Trans-Siberian Express, which became the lifeblood of Russia. Steam train development became critical to Russian economic development. Early Soviet designs were based on American designs. This includes the largest steam locomotive ever built, called the Andreev. Though the Andreev turned out to be too heavy and too large, Russian train development soon excelled with trains flying past on the Trans-Siberian Express, massively boosting economic performance and trade. The railroad became a symbol of Soviet success. Russian steam locomotive design saw a renaissance during this period. But the Soviet Union could last and collapse during the 80s and 90s, especially during Gorbachev's perestroika. But the steam trains survived the collapse of the Soviet Union. Many can be found in the former Soviet republics and of course Russia. Although the exact number is not known, there's probably over 200 still in Belarus alone. A fleet of steam trains is still maintained in case of a nuclear war and no doubt for reasons of nostalgia. Many are kept in museums now, but in working order. Steam trains had survived the Russian Revolution, the Soviet era, perestroika, Soviet collapse, and now are still in use today. Steam trains are an icon of Russian and former Soviet republics. Increasingly, they are being used for tourism. Several of the more scenic routes are now run by steam train. This clip shows part of the Karelian route run by steam train. Karelia is in the north near Murmansk. At a junction between Warsaw and Moscow and Lvov and the Baltics, one of the most critical rail hubs of the Soviet Union was in Baranovichi in Belarus. Baranovichi's rail complex grew very rapidly. I have visited Baranovichi by rail several times. On one occasion, I was lucky enough to visit magnificent collection of old steam trains, many, many steam trains, which turned out to be the nuclear reserve of Belarus. Visiting the rail yard and the maintenance center was a real experience. I'll never forget the water dispenser 
it looked like a huge transformer. There were steam vents firing off all over the place, and I thought I was going to get electrocuted. This was during the collapse of the Soviet Union, and the steam trains were being maintained, not for tourist purposes or for a museum, but for working purposes. In the case of a nuclear war, only steam trains will keep working. They have no electric parts. The electric magnetic pulse given off by a nuclear explosion will fry and destroy any electric components. The EMP pulse is arguably one of the most destructive aspects of a nuclear explosion. And in fact, it's rumored that North Korea's Tuppel missile given to it by Russia is an EMP device. This nuclear war simulator shows a war, an attack by the United States of America on Russia. But because of the mobility of the Russian nuclear forces, Russia will be able to strike back. The key to Russia's strategy of retaliation is the mobility of its nuclear arsenal. Submarines, mobile launchers and train-based launchers are key to Russia's ability to survive a first strike and retaliate. Neither side can survive a nuclear war in any meaningful sense. Nuclear weapons are indiscriminate and their effects long-lasting. Tens of millions would die in an all-out war. Russia has the biggest nuclear weapons arsenal in the world. The mobility of its nuclear armed forces are key to its survival. As devastating as a nuclear attack, full-scale attack on Russia would be, Russia's resilience and size will always allow it to strike back. Nuclear explosions or even a pure EMP weapon would take out the electric grid. The fallout would be terrible and the long-lasting events very deadly. Despite conditions which would truly be like hell on earth, the steam trains would keep running. Essential services would be maintained by rail. As the Chernobyl disaster proved, Russians are capable of operating in the most terrible of nuclear conditions. Let us hope that such an event will never happen and that Russia will not need its steam trains.